Whenever you develop batteries, you have to be aware that you have to fulfill several requirements at a time. Reducing costs, faster charging, high safety, but most important, how can we do the recycling? We love to make signs, but uh, we're doing this not because we want to do signs, we want to see things changing and overall to reduce um, our uh, impact on the climate at the end of the day. At Kadams, we combine innovation with infrastructure in the heart of Europe's leading science clusters. We understand that the places where research occurs are as critical as the research itself, which is why we reach out to the rock star scientists to grasp not just what they do, but why they do it. Join us and become part of this story as we take a look behind the science. My name is Dirk Uwe I'm working here since more than 20 years, meanwhile as a professor with a special focus on battery technology, but also the change of the energy system in total, so introducing renewable energies to make our world CO2 neutral. What is the impact that successful battery technology can have on the world? So the batteries have impact mainly in two fields. The first one is mobility. Uh, so with the battery technology we have today, we really have a chance to make CO2 neutral passenger traffic. Electric vehicles all over the world will be purely battery in the coming decades. Uh, and uh, this requires for sure battery technology as we have it today. So this is one uh, sector where batteries are absolutely necessary. But the other one is also for the integration of the renewable energies because they are intermittent. Uh, so we have power production from wind when the wind blows and we have uh, power production from PV systems when the sun is shining. But uh, during the night, obviously, there is no sun and uh, the wind also changes. And therefore, it requires short-term energy storage. Short-term means balancing the system for one day, maybe two days. And this is the task for batteries. So if we have to balance for seasonal issues or for three weeks in a row with low solar radiation, low wind, uh, as we have it sometimes in winter, then we take hydrogen as a storage uh, media. But batteries are for all these uh, short-term uh, challenges in balancing uh, demand and supply of power. Whenever you develop batteries, you have to be aware that you have to fulfill several requirements at a time. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, most emphasis is for sure on reducing cost by maintaining a very high safety level. This is unquestionable, the most important uh, parameter, which gets the more difficult, uh, the higher the energy densities are. And then it's fast charging. Yeah, so because uh, people would like to drive long distances with their car, as they do today with gasoline or uh, diesel. But uh, it makes no sense to make batteries for 1,000 kilometers into all of the passenger cars. This would be really a waste of materials, of energy, and so on. But if we can recharge the battery in relatively short times, then the people have no problems uh, with the limited uh, driving distance of the car. At the same point of time, we also have to think about the circular economy issues. So what to do with the batteries when they may not be used in the car anymore? Is there something like a second life? But most important, how can we do the recycling? Are the materials that make the best batteries uh, inherently the most limited or the most polluting? What is the interplay there? Whenever we work with metals or with raw materials which come from mining, Mining is a dirty business. The point is we have to make sure that we minimize the impacts uh, in, in, the mi in the field of mining. And in lithium-ion batteries, we have, um, let me say, three critical materials. Uh, first of all, it is lithium itself, but which is just about 3% of the weight of a lithium-ion battery. And then it's cobalt and nickel. And um, First of all, we try to get into this uh, circular economy uh, to reduce uh, the long-term demand of these materials, so to reduce mining activities in the future. Uh, but for sure, major emphasis in research is also in replacing these materials. For example, this uh, large cell here, 
Yeah, so this is a battery cell, which uh, we have just under investigation here, by the way, for mobility activities uh, for trains. And uh, this battery here is a sodium ion battery. Yeah, so here the lithium is replaced by sodium. And sodium is not rare at all. Yeah, sodium is part of uh, the salt we're eating every day. So in this battery, we have no cobalt and we have no lithium anymore. And this still has nickel. Uh, but uh, nickel is significantly less rare than cobalt, for example. So, um, nevertheless, there is no question that the batteries with the highest energy densities, so which we use, for example, in our smartphones um, or in tablets or in other portable applications, they all still have cobalt uh, and uh, also nickel, because uh, this gives highest energy densities uh, these days. Uh, so replacing the materials typically come along with reduction in some other performance parameters. So it is always a waiting. Uh, so uh, what is more important in which type of application and uh, in the portable application, it is weight, weight and volume. Can you tell me a bit more about the organization here? I, you have a very special setup, it seems, both in the human capital you have, but also the infrastructure. To the great luck, I have to say, to have a research building since uh, two years now, where we have all this in one building. Yeah, so uh, we have looked to the labs on the one side, we can test complete battery packs in a car in temperature chambers going from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees C and just um, 10 meters apart. We have microscopes which allow us to look onto the crystal structure on the nanometer scale to understand what may have happened if you charge or operate a battery at these high or low temperatures. So we can shake the batteries and and um, yeah, this also gives a lot of motivation for sure for the people working here yeah, because they have the full range of technical equipment available. Are there any projects you can talk about that you particularly enjoyed where you got to work with the private sector yeah. to bring something to market? So there are very different types of projects. Uh, so we are working, for example, with uh, car manufacturers uh, on optimizing um, diagnostic tools. Yeah? So we are developing the algorithms. So we analyze the different uh, battery chemistries, how algorithms need to be adapted. Or we are working with, uh, with mining companies, uh, even in, in Germany, for sand, uh, for, for the glass industry. Um, to um, reduce the CO2 emissions uh, with renewable energies and battery storage systems for their mining activities. Since years we're working with a train manufacturer, uh, uh, making more and more of these uh, full electric uh, trains for driving distances of 100, 150, 200 kilometers of a tour. This all can be done with battery technology. Here we're doing a lot in life cycle assessments. Um, on the one hand, uh, so looking really into the um, energy balances, uh, raw material balances, but also uh, lifetime itself, because the requirements in the train sector are significantly different from the passenger. Uh, passenger uh, sector, a passenger car is uh, standing around 22 to 23 hours a day. Yeah? So the battery is only working one to two hours a day. In the train it works 16 hours a day. Yeah? And uh, it should have lifetimes of 10, 15, 20 years. And um, so our task is really to find out in a relatively short time if this can be achieved or not. And this requires this very interdisciplinary look into the batteries. You just can't put it on a test bench because then you have a result in 10 years. You have to find uh, the most appropriate test profiles, but then we have to open the batteries. Yeah? So this is part of our infrastructure that we really can disassemble batteries. Yeah? As I said, we're not developing new materials, but we're looking into the materials because we want to understand what is changing. So if you do fast charging, how does the crystal structure changes? Or do you get some corrosion or some gassing inside? How is the current distributing homogeneously in the battery and so on? And uh, this is what we can learn from opening the batteries to have a look inside. And then comes the third part to put this into models, into uh, models um, and uh, using also artificial intelligence uh, um, structures uh, to make then predictions on the possible lifetime in certain applications. Can you talk a bit about what benefits you see for companies being physically near the amazing work you're doing here? 
So it is, was always our, our goal to get co-located with uh, companies. Uh, we managed it very well in the last years uh, to get more and more companies convinced that the co-location here uh, is extremely beneficial for all. This is a very innovative environment, so new ideas are generated all the time, and if you're here with your own stuff, uh, you can take part in the discussions, in the presentations, and, and so on. You can hire already students as student assistants in early periods, maybe doing a joint uh, master theses or PhDs. We can use infrastructure together. Yeah? So we are able here to, that um, even companies come with us uh, working in the lab. Yeah? So if somebody has a battery to analyze, um, they must not only pass a, a battery to us and let us uh, analyze it, they can go with us into the lab. Yeah. They can come here and open the battery cells. We can support them, um, they can do it on their own, we can do it also for them. So all the things are possible. Yeah? So we're getting into the business, uh, making a, up a new location, that's extremely helpful to share uh, uh, infrastructures. At the end of the day, I hope when I go uh, on retirement in uh, some 12 years or something like this, I hope then we can say we have done the switch uh, towards uh, uh, away from the combustion engines for new cars, 2035, the goal in, in, in Europe, uh, uh, having no new combustion engine cars. Goal in Germany, 2035, to have no uh, fossil power plants in operation anymore. And if I'm lucky, when I'm done with my uh, business, these targets uh, has been achieved. Yeah? This um, makes it feel great. Our proximity to leading research can support your innovation journey too. Join us and become a part of this vibrant community of innovators.